guys and welcome back to my channel it's your girl sarah and i'm back with another curly to straight routine this time i'm only going to be using Keracare products i originally wanted to get the a firm range because i wanted to see if i could replicate a typical silk press that i'll get over here in the uk but i wasn't really feeling the price that it would have cost to get all the products so i'm just using this Keracare line instead so all the products came out to about 50 pounds and that is a lot for just one routine but I will be using the products over and over again. But if I really think about it, how much would I actually be paying at the hairdressers if I was to go get this done there? So really and truly it's a fraction of the price that you'll probably be paying at the hairdressers for one time. But in saying that, I only straighten my hair about two times a year so, <laughs> so it's probably not as worth it as I thought. But hey, I'm, I'm not going to get this professionally done because I can do it myself and the results are similar. And I like the fact that I'm in control and if I was to get heat damage, I only have myself to blame. Because if someone else gave me heat damage, I would feel a lot worse. But anyway, let's get into this routine. So as I was chatting away, I just took my hair down from those twists and started to saturate my hair. Two nights ago before I filmed this video, I pre-pooed my hair. So I didn't put any oil on my scalp because I hate doing that. I've done it previously and the oil was still in my hair. So my roots were really oily. So yeah, I don't put any oil on my scalp. So what I did was I sprayed my hair with water, I applied a moisturizer, and then I just put my hair into those twists that you saw. So this is what my hair is looking like after two weeks of not washing my hair. And as you can see, it's hella moisturized. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just raking my fingers through to just get any knots out. And then once I'm done with that, I proceed to shampoo my hair. So here I'm taking the Care Hydrating Detangling Shampoo and I'm making sure that my hair is fully saturated before I apply the shampoo. So I'm taking a lot of this shampoo because it doesn't give a good lather. So you will be seeing me take more and more and more. So for the first round, I'm just shampooing my scalp. So I separately shampoo the front sections, the back sections and the middle section. I used a good amount of shampoo. <laughs> But as I said, I'm not scared of using shampoo. Shampoo is to clean your scalp and your scalp needs a clean environment to be healthy and to grow. So please don't shy away from shampoo. Just don't use the ones that really strip your hair. So this one says it produces a rich lava to remove excess oils from the hair and scalp without stripping it. It lightly conditions, eases wet and dry combing, it repairs damaged areas and it moisturizes. And I can say that when I used the shampoo, I was very, very pleased with what it was doing with my hair. It didn't feel stripped at all, didn't feel dry. It actually did feel quite nourished. Not moisturised with oils, but it felt nourished, if you get what I mean. So I really do like this shampoo. I haven't gone through any of these ingredients to see if they've got any nasties in them. Lately I've been learning how to read label knees and started to realise the names of the nasty ingredients are in our products. So I probably will have a look through sometime <laughs> when I have the time. The first shampoo is always a, a meh kind of one. <laughs> so you just do it to actually set up for the second one really. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I was doing here. And then I just went ahead and rinsed that out. And I also shampooed my hair twice. Done the same thing, shampooed it in the front back and middle and I take that shampoo all the way down to my ends because I want to get rid of all the silicones and all the nasties that's in our hair products that we don't even know about and just making sure that my hair is squeaky clean. I don't want no residue on my hair at all. But once I've put the shampoo on for the second time I go ahead and take my scalp massager and I massage the whole of my scalp just so that I can get a good cleanse and also to stimulate my roots because stimulation of the roots is good for hair growth. Then I apply more shampoo to the ends as well instead of just making the shampoo rinse down to my ends because I want to get rid of all the gunk that's on my hair. It hasn't been washed in two weeks so there will be a lot of product build up and as I said there are silicones in most of our products that we use. So for some of these silicones a shampoo is actually needed to get rid of them. So yeah, I'm just really working that shampoo into my hair and even finger detangling a little bit. This shampoo was right when it says it eases wet combing as well. And I don't usually detangle when I got shampoo in my hair because it tends to be quite difficult. But with this shampoo, it was actually doable, which was surprising to me. And once I'm done shampooing, I just rinse it all out, making sure that all of it is out. You don't want to leave any shampoo on your hair. 
and once I rinsed out all the shampoo it left my hair feeling soft and moisturized and it didn't feel stripped at all and you saw how much shampoo I used so yeah I actually really like the shampoo and I will be using it again and I recommend it for anybody who wants to buy a new shampoo for their curly straight routine the next thing I'm taking is this Keracare Hermecto cream conditioner it says it helps to correct and prevent moisture loss due to exposure to chemicals it helps to prevent brittleness breakage and splitting it hydrates and humectifies it detangles for easy combing and it adds shine so i like to use conditioners and deep conditioners because the conditioner part of the washing routine is to detangle my hair so I don't bother detangling first because I'm gonna shampoo and it's gonna get tangled again but if you do have more of a coily texture I do recommend to detangle first and then shampoo in sections while it's in twists that way it won't get tangled again so yeah I just detangle my hair while this conditioner is in my hair this conditioner was okay it didn't have a lot of slip from what I can remember and it was very lightweight which I didn't mind because obviously with the curly to straight routine you want lightweight products you don't want anything to weigh down your hair so yeah so I'm not really looking for it to do much because I'm going to deep condition my hair anyway but yeah it allowed me to detangle my hair which is what its purpose is in my routines in my curly routines I usually use the herbal essences conditioner but I read the ingredients of that conditioner and I didn't like what I saw so I will be using a different conditioner to detangle my hair with my curly hair but yeah this conditioner had quite a strong scent it smelled fresh but it had like more of a cologne-y kind of scent but it did smell nice overall not that I care about scents in my products anymore because I researched that perfume can actually be damaging to the hair as well I'll probably have to do a whole video about what I researched because it's probably going to change what I use in my hair there are some ingredients that I said to myself I'm going to be okay with using in my hair but there are some ingredients that if I see in my product I'm not going to use it anymore. So yeah I'll talk about that another time. So as I'm detangling my hair I'm realising that it's a little bit matted and that's due to my hair not being combed for two weeks. So apparently about 100 hairs fall out your hair every day. So me not combing my hair for two weeks that means there's about 1400 hairs that's just falling out of my hair and just still in my hair because I'm not combing it out so that's why my hair tends to get matted because all of the fallen hair is still up in my hair <laughs> so as I'm trying to rate the product through I'm realizing that my hair is matted but all that hair is going to come out once I start brushing it and any hair that comes out of my hair while I'm raking it I just pull it to the side now I'm taking my easy detangler brush and I'm brushing my hair through and since I've already raked through and finger detangled my hair, it doesn't take very long at all. I know some people don't like the easy detangler brush, but honestly, I haven't used my wire tooth comb ever since I've got the brush. I really don't like using the brush without the clip on it. So if you do have one of these brushes and hated it, maybe try using the clip on it. It really does make a difference. But I must say it doesn't really work well on really, really matted hair. It takes about the same amount of time same amount of effort as a wide tooth comb on matted hair so I made sure to pre-poo my hair before I straightened it just because I really hate straightening my hair when my hair's been too dry previously my hair just ends up being really really dry because when you straighten your hair you need the moisture and protein balance to be right ideally you want your hair to have an optimal moisture level but you also want to use a protein treatment mask to set your hair up for all the heat that you're going to apply to your hair so when I mean moisture I don't mean oils you want it to be naturally moisturized without having to add oil to your routine because when you add oil that's when the problems occur so at this point in the routine I don't want to add any oil to my hair because usually in my curly routines I would use oil but in my curly to straight routines I don't want to use any oil and this is where I think I've gone wrong is just using too much products just doing too much doing the most when really and truly it just needs the bare minimum when it comes to products but anyway once I've finished tangling my hair I just twist the sections up and then I put the twist up and cover my head with a plastic cap and I left that on for about 15 minutes while I showered so once the 15 minutes is up I go ahead and take the twist down again and as you can see my hair is really soaked in all of that product and now I'm just thoroughly rinsing that product out Hi. 
and then I'm taking the Care Care Intensive Restorative Mask. It was a little bit of a weird texture. I've never really seen a texture like this before in a deep conditioner or in a product at all. So it felt like a moisturizer, but at the same time it had like a gooey consistency. It was very weird anyway. And again, like the conditioner, it's not a thick product, which again, isn't necessary when you're doing curly to straight routines. And for what I can see at the back of the ingredients, there's not any thick butters in there, like you'll get in most of these deep conditioners that you have for curly hair. For the other side, it usually gets a bit dry, so I just re-wet it, and then I apply the product. It says this is the ultimate therapy for damaged hair. It actually fortifies hair so that it is 42% stronger. It says innovative conditioning agents and fruit extracts repair damage, reinforce weakened areas, and increases elasticity. I can't even say that word. Elasticity. Okay. It also says the cuticles are sealed for better moisture retention as the hair takes on a tangle-free, silky, soft, and shiny texture. I guess this deep conditioner is more of a protein mask since it's talking about being restorative but I did find that my hair was quite moisturized and I did like the results of my hair after I washed the deep conditioner out. You know you have a good deep conditioner when your hair looks intact and less frizzy than it was before. Again, it didn't have a lot of slip, but because my hair was entangled already, I didn't really need it to have a lot of slip. I probably could have got more slip with this product if I used a lot, but it's not necessary to use a lot of product. You just need it to cover your hair and that's it. The excess product is not going to condition your hair more. The product is the product, if you get what I mean. So you can save a lot of money by just not going overboard with the product. When you're spending like £10 on deep conditioners, you really don't have to use a lot at all. And after I finish applying the deep conditioner, I go ahead and comb that product through again, just so that it can have an even distribution. And you'll see once you comb it out, how much product is in the hair. So yeah, once I've finished combing it through, I'll go ahead and twist the section back up. And once I've finished applying the deep conditioner and twisted my hair up, I go ahead and put the plastic cap on and finish getting showered. Then I got dressed and applied the heat using my hooded dryer attachment and my hair dryer. And I'm using the hair dryer on low heat, low speed. And I sat under there for about 15 minutes or forever how long I could take it. And then I went to put my makeup on and put the dinner on. I was making stew peas, vegetarian style. So I just put the peas on in my pressure cooker. So I had the deep conditioner on for about 45 minutes. And then I went to go and wash the deep conditioner out off camera. Just making sure to wash that deep conditioner out thoroughly. And if I do say so myself, it's looking very, very moisturised. And I did leave my hair up in that towel for about 20 to 30 minutes while I did my makeup. So my hair is just damp. So now I'm applying the Care Care Leave-In Conditioner. This says it helps to prevent thermal, combing and ultraviolet damage. It improves the surface properties of hair, leaving it smooth and with lots of sheen. It detangles and it contains sunscreens. And it says it's excellent for blow drying. So on the packaging it says to apply a dime size amount. So because my hair is a bit longer, I'm applying a dime and a half. So I'm applying that to each section and I'm also applying the Care Care Silk and Seal Blow Drying Complex on top of that. This says it seals cuticle surfaces, creating sheen and softness. It says it eases the glad of the styling brush during blow drying, contains no oil and dries to a non-greasy finish, and it creates body and a silky smooth texture. So I'm also applying a dime and a half sized amount of this product on my hair as well. So yeah, I just go ahead and apply those products on each section. So I initially tried to go in with the blow dryer and the nozzle attachment with the wide tooth comb on low speed, low heat. That wasn't working. So I went in with the paddle brush. That wasn't working. And that's because my ends were complete trash. The comb and the brush just kept snagging. And that's because I had a lot of single strand knots at the ends. So they were just snagging, snagging. And I didn't want to do any further damage to my hair. So I just went in with my Revlon paddle brush hair dryer and just blow dried each section on level one. And one of my gripes with this hair dryer is that it doesn't get to the roots well enough to dry the roots. So here I'm just hovering the blow dryer on my roots to try and get in there a little bit. And once I finish blow drying a section, I go ahead and twist it back up so that it doesn't get tangled again. Now that it's less tangled and dry, I go ahead and take my other hair dryer with the nozzle attachment and my pad brush 
and I'm using low heat high speed still just because I'm just trying to get it as straight as possible without having to use that high heat and as you can see the brush is gliding through my hair now so that blow dryer really helped me out <laughs> I used to blow dry my hair this way all the time when I used to straighten my hair but my old nozzle attachment hair dryer broke so that's why I bought the Revlon one but I needed to buy a diffuser so I went ahead and bought this hair dryer and it came with a nozzle attachment so this is what I'm using today so I'm just blowing it out and I'm making sure that the nozzle attachment doesn't actually touch my hair it's just hovering on top of my hair and once I finish each section I don't twist it up like I did before I just twirl it around and clip it because I don't want it to have any crimps in the hair from the twists so yeah just continue to do that for each section and honestly I don't know what's wrong with me I keep forgetting to put my heat protectant in my hair so now I'm applying the Tresemme heat protectant but luckily the leave-in conditioner says it has thermal protection so I felt a little bit safer knowing that thank god so I was worried about having heat damage initially when I was recording but I remembered about the leave-in conditioner having thermal protection so the panic was over I was okay my hair is gonna be okay so now that all the sections are done I go ahead and take them down so that I can blast it on high heat high speed just to get it as straight as possible because you want to get this blow dry as straight as possible so that you don't have to do much work when you're doing the straightening process and you can do that one pass and not damage your hair by doing two three passes and if your hair is really coily you might want to focus on this blow drying part even more to try and get your hair as straight as possible but try to use low heat high speed rather than high heat high speed you just want to use high heat high speed on that very last bit so I usually like to trim my hair when it's blow dried just because I can see where the damage is or where the split ends are and I can see clearly what needs to go. So here I'm just showing you where it gets a bit see through on my ends and just showing you how much I might need to cut off. I did end up cutting a lot more off than that. <laughs> so after the blow drying process I usually take a little mini break but this day I had to go and finish cooking dinner but then my family came home so I had to change rooms. I'll say this is about two or three hours later. So here I'm just doing a quick length check, you know, to see how it, long it is before I go ahead and chop three inches off. But anyway, I go ahead and part off my hair how I like to straighten it. This time I did it a bit differently. I parted the front section into two and then at the back I parted off from ear to ear and I started straightening from the bottom. I started straightening in this way because I didn't want to have that deep part in, in the middle like I usually get if I part it all the way down the middle. But um, I ended up straightening it in that way anyway, so this was kind of pointless. <laughs> but doing it in this way actually made it feel like it was going a lot quicker. So I'm starting off in that back section and I'm starting with a small section at the back. So for this portion of the video, it was on manual focus for some reason. And it comes back in focus in the middle part of the hair. So I'm just going to skip to that and then show you guys what I'm doing. So my straighteners are set to 210 degrees. I don't go higher than that because I don't feel like it's necessary. My hair's not that thick and I've blow dried it as straight as possible so it should actually do well on 210. So I went off to do the back of my hair off camera anyway because I was just straightening it normally just line for line. So for that middle section of the hair I do half and half so one side and one side and for the very top piece of my hair instead of taking it downwards straight away I'm taking it upwards and then straightening the roots and then I'm swinging it to the side and straighten it to the side of my head. I just found it easier to operate that way. So I'm just showing you how I did that. So with the front sections, I go from the ear upwards. I'm taking relatively small sections, but not too small to be sitting there for two hours, three hours. <laughs> I think all in all, it took me about an hour and a half. But yeah, so I'm taking small sections and I'm taking my thermoceramic straightening brush from Denman and I'm using that to chase my straighteners. I used it in my last routine and I loved it. And this time it worked even better because my hair was straighter so it wasn't getting snagged at all. So I just take the straightening brush and brush it through once and then I put it back into my hair, comb it down a bit and then put the straightener behind it. And then I do one slow pass with the straightener chasing the brush. And this time I'm actually going to do the pass a lot slower than I usually do. And this is why I was more worried about heat damage because I knew that I was going to be doing a slower pass to try and get salon results. 
because usually I'll do a quick pass and then I do a longer pass afterwards. But with this routine, I'm doing one long pass. So yeah, that's what's also different to my other routines. I don't usually feel safe doing a long pass because I just feel like if anything's going to give you heat damage, it's the long passes. You know what I mean? And Deeper Than Hair TV made a good point saying that your straightener is already at 410 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you go over it twice, that's 820 degrees. And that point hit me and I was like, okay. So for this routine and for any routines after this, I'm just going to go over with the straightener once and once only. And it actually works. But yeah, I was so happy with the way that it was coming out. It was so silky and straight and smooth and shiny. <laughs> like... Honestly, I was I was so happy and even now I'm two and a half weeks in and my hair's still straight. Honestly guys, this is it. This is a new routine, this is a new drugstore routine that you need in your life. Okay. <laughs> and once I get closer to the top of my head, I split that section in two. Just because the section is a bit too big for my straightener to straighten that whole line. And also the front section of my hair is a lot looser in texture compared to the back of my hair. And this isn't due to heat damage. This is just purely how my hair is. I say the front part of my hair is 3C and the back part of my hair is 4A. So with the front section, it's much easier to straighten. So I don't do as long as a pass as I do at the back of my hair. You can find all the products that I've used in this tutorial in Superdrug, which I was actually quite surprised about. They've been up in their game with the black hair care. Mm -hmm. Apart from the leave-in conditioner actually, because I had to get that on look fantastic. And I also had the silk and seal from before, actually, but I didn't include it in the price. It all came up to £52, I believe, including the heat protectant spray that I bought as well. And by the way, I did actually record this whole video with me talking throughout the whole video. And this was the day that my mic decided to break. <laughs> so if you see my mouth moving, it's because I'm chatting too much, in fact. <laughs> But when I actually came to edit the video, the whole thing was in silence. I couldn't believe it. And that same night, I bought a new, more expensive mic, which I believe is going to be more durable than this stupid one. So once again, I take that straightening brush and brush it through. And then I take the Demon brush close to the roots, comb it down a bit. And then I chase the Demon brush with the straightener all the way down, doing one slow pass. And I'm on to the last piece now, and this is the most glorious part of the whole routine. And that's all the hair done, and look at it, guys. Whew, she's silky, silky. It was so silky, so smooth, so shiny, and it was so lightweight. There's something in these products that just make the hair shiny. I'm not really too sure, but these products work. So after I finish straightening all the sections, I go ahead and take my straightener and straighten the perimeter of my hair again. Just because the way that I straighten my hair, it doesn't get to the front of my hair properly. So I do think that the straightening results can differ depending on the products that you use. The proof is in this video because this routine is pretty similar to the routine that's on my channel already. As for heat damage, I'll update you guys on if there is any. <laughs> As I said, my hair is still straight two and a half weeks in, so I probably will try to keep it in for four weeks max. And I'm also recording how I kept my hair straight for the whole month, if you want to see that video, if it lasts for a month. And I also will be recording my straight to curly routine as well. So if you want to see any of those videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So I did go ahead and trim my hair after I finished straightening it. I'm using a new technique that I got reminded of from a YouTuber that I'm subscribed to. I don't know if you guys remember, it's the Korea clips, you know, where you just put it in your hair and you hold it down, bring it down to where you want to cut it and just cut it. So that really, really helps me. I will be uploading that video next week. So if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn that notification bell on so you can get notified when that video goes up. And the last product I'm going to use is the Care Care Silk and Seal Liquid Sheen. This says it's excellent for blow drying too, but I just use this to add some sheen to my hair once I'm done. This says it revitalizes hair's natural sheen, helps to protect your thermal styling, it eases wet combing, helps to seal cuticles to prevent moisture loss, helps to protect hair from ultraviolet damage, and it combats humidity. So yeah, I just add that to my hair to make my hair look even more silky and shiny. And then I just take my powder brush to brush it through. And I usually like to bump 
the ends of my hair because I don't like my hair being dead straight. But I record a little trick for you guys to do that without heat. I'm going to put that in the video on how I maintained my straight hair for the month. So once I've sprayed that silk and seal spray in my hair, I go ahead and wrap my hair. I've got a more detailed video on my channel on how I wrap my hair if you want to go check that out too. I actually almost forgot I did this part. So what I'm doing here is I am doing the saran silk wrap method. I've also got a video of that on my channel as well. I'll link it all in the description box below, don't you worry. So because it was late, I didn't use the hairdryer and I feel like you need the hairdryer for this to work. So I just put saran wrap or the cling film on my head and left it on for like half an hour. So next time I will be using the heat. So yeah, I'm just taking it down now just to show you guys if it came out looking silkier or not. So this method is supposed to make your hair come out more silky, more smooth, more sleek, more shiny. <laughs> but I felt like my hair was the same. So yeah, definitely using heat next time. But yeah, this is what my hair looks like guys. I was so happy. Honestly, I'm still happy up to this day. It just came out so good. It just, oh, <laughs> it just came out so good. I was just so happy, honestly. And I'm glad it came out so well and I was able to share it with you guys. And of course, this video is not sponsored or as I would have said, I've not been sponsored yet because I'm such a small channel. But anyways, you're gonna help me out by subscribing, ain't ya? <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, you can subscribe if you like. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I did apply some essential oils on my hair before I wrapped my hair. And I did it every night before I wrapped my hair. But yeah, I'm just re-wrapping my hair and I'm going to put my headscarf on and go to bed. With the headscarf, I just fold my headscarf into a triangle and put it on backwards with the triangle hang down front of my face. And then I just tie it to the back of my head. And then once that's secure, I pull the triangle down at the front and just tuck it under on the side. And that's all there is to it. But yeah, that's the end of the routine, guys. If you made it this far, you are a trooper and you might as well just subscribe. <laughs> but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.